welcome. This is the beginning video to a basic options trading course. Welcome to the world of option trading. If you are totally new to options, then this course is for you. In this course, I fully and completely break down option trading, and I explain each part in a way that is simple and easy to understand, including showing lots of examples. Options are one of the most, if not the most, diversified trading instruments available. In addition, one can trade some option strategies with very little money, much less than it would take to trade stocks. One of the benefits of options is that one can increase leverage while at the same time reducing risk or capping risk to a fixed maximum amount. So what is an option? An option is a contract that one buys that locks in a buy price or a sell price on a particular stock for a set amount of time. There are two types. One type, which is called a call option, gives the contract holder the right to buy a stock for a predetermined set price within a set time period. The other type, which is called a put option, gives the contract holder the right to sell a stock for a predetermined set price within a set time period. An option is a contract between two people, a buyer and a seller. A seller is also called a writer because the seller is technically writing a contract and selling it to the buyer. When someone buys a call option, they are buying a contract from the contract writer, also called the seller. The contract states that the option buyer is entitled to buy 100 shares of a particular stock for a preset price. The contract also states that the option seller agrees to sell the option buyer that stock at that preset price if and when the option buyer decides to buy it up until the time the contract expires. The buyer of the option contract has the choice of whether or not he wants to buy the stock from the option writer. His contract says he has the right to do so, but it is his option, which is why they are called options. In other words, when someone buys a call option, they are locking in a preset buy price for a stock. When buying an option, there are many choices for the preset buy price. For instance, if the stock is $10 a share, one can buy a contract locking in a buy price of $10, or they could buy a contract that locks in some other price. $9, $8, $11, $12. Of course, the different contracts cost different amounts. When someone buys an option, there is a time limit on how long the buyer has to exercise or use the option. The longer the time limit, the more the contract costs to buy. Just like a call option, when someone buys a put option, they are also buying a contract from the contract writer, also called the seller. The contract states that the option buyer is entitled to sell 100 shares of a particular stock for a preset price. The contract also states that the option seller agrees to buy that stock from the option buyer at the preset price if and when the option buyer decides to sell it up until the time the contract expires. The buyer of the option has the choice of whether or not he wants to sell the stock to the option writer. As an option trader, one can choose to be a contract buyer, in other words, they can buy an option, or they can be a contract writer, in other words, they can sell an option. Both have advantages and both have disadvantages. So why would someone buy or sell an option? What is their purpose and what are they used for? Options have many uses and they are actually one of the most diversified trading instruments out there. However, there are three main uses. The first is that one can use an option as an insurance policy to limit losses on a trade to a preset amount. For instance, if a stock is $10 a share, a trader can lock in a sell price for a fee and not have to worry if the price of the stock drops in price. No matter how low the stock goes in price, the option holder has locked in the right to sell his stock for a preset price. One can also use an option for speculation. For instance, let's say hypothetically a stock is $10 a share and a trader feels the stock is going to increase in price. For a fee, he can lock in a predetermined price to buy the stock in the future no matter what the price of the stock is at that time. If the stock is $10 a share now, for maybe a dollar a share, he can lock in the right to buy that stock for $10 anytime during the next month. Then, if the stock increases in price to $12, $15, $100, any price, the trader can then use this option to buy the stock for $10 and then immediately sell the stock for the higher current price, making the difference in profit. The third main use for options is a hedge to mitigate risk. 
A diversified portfolio that includes options can be set up in a way that greatly limits losses for extreme market moves. In addition, companies sometimes use options to lock in future prices similar to the way they use future contracts. There are many different strategies for trading options. Some strategies are very risky and come with large gains or losses. Other strategies are very low risk and come with capped gains and losses to a fixed maximum amount. Some strategies involve combining two or more options in different ways to profit in ways other than the change in stock price. For instance, options could be combined in a way to profit when the individual stock or even the overall market gets more volatile or less volatile, or to profit when other things happen such as changes in interest rates. For this course, for simplification, I'm going to focus on stock options only. However, there are options in other markets that work basically the same way. Options can be a bit confusing at first, but after one learns the basics, they realize that options are not complicated. In the next several videos, I will break down options in detail in a way that is easy to understand. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will look at one example of how put options are used as insurance to protect against loss in markets. Let's say a trader owns 100 shares of a stock or ETF. For this example, I will use SLV, the silver ETF. At the time of making this video, SLV has a current price of $18.62 per share. This trader feels that SLV will increase in value long term, so he doesn't want to sell it. However, he is concerned that the price of silver may make a big drop in price sometime in the near future for some reason such as some economic news due to be released soon. To protect his position, he buys a put option that expires in one month as an insurance policy. This put option allows him to sell the stock for $18 any time between the time the option was purchased and the time the option expires a month later, no matter what the price of the stock is at that time. He pays $0.33 cents per share to do this for a total cost of $33 plus commissions. This means that at any time between the time the option is purchased and the time the option contract expires, the trader has the option of selling his 100 shares of SLV for $18 no matter what the price of SLV is at that time. Even if the price of SLV drops to $6 per share, the trader can still sell it for $18 per share anytime he wants up until the time that the option contract expires. When used this way, a put option acts like an insurance policy against loss. The trader had 100 shares of stock, currently priced at $18.62 per share, worth $1,862 total. He buys a put option for $33 total, locking in the right for him to sell that stock for $18 a share any time between the time he purchased the option and the time the option expires in a month should the price drop. So for $33, he has locked in the right to sell his SLV for $1,800, effectively placing a floor on the amount he can lose. The trader has locked in the right to sell SLV for $18. However, he is not required to sell it if he does not want to. For instance, if SLV increases in price, the trader keeps his 100 shares and the option, or insurance policy in this case, simply expires worthless and unused. If the stock does drop below $18 per share, the trader can use his contract any time before it expires to sell his stock for the full price that he locked in of $18. This trader bought an option giving him the right to sell the stock for $18 per share, which was below the current price that the stock was at the time the option was sold. However, that was not his only choice of contracts to buy. This trader bought an $18 put option for $0.33 cents per share. In other words, he bought the right to sell his shares for $18 per share, and he paid $0.33 cents per share up front to do this. If he had paid $0.78 cents per share up front, he could have bought a contract giving him the right to sell his stock for $19 per share. It costs more up front, but he locks in a higher sell price. Instead of locking in a sell price of $18 per share, for an upfront cost of $0.33 cents per share, the trader locks in a sell price of $19 a share for an upfront cost of $0.78 cents per share. Notice here that the trader locks in the right to sell the stock for $19, but the stock is currently trading at only $18.62 per share. 
Therefore, the trader locks in the right to sell the stock for a price that is 38 cents a share higher than the stock is currently trading for. However, he paid more up front. He paid 78 cents per share for this option, with the option allowing him to sell for $18 only cost 33 cents per share. He pays 45 cents per share more up front, but if the price of SLV drops, he has locked in the right to sell it for a dollar per share higher. Another choice would be for the trader to buy a put option that locks in the right to sell the stock for $17 per share. This would only cost the trader 13 cents per share or $13 total up front. However, he is locking in a price to sell that is $1.62 lower than SLV is currently trading for. This contract only protects the stock against extreme losses of more than $1.62 per share, but it only costs 13 cents per share up front. For only seven cents per share, the trader can lock in the right to sell the stock at $16, and for only four cents, the trader can lock in the right to sell the stock for $15. For a higher cost, $1.53 per share, the trader can lock in the right to sell SLV for $20, and for $2.40 per share, the trader can lock in the right to sell SLV for $21. Hopefully you can begin to see where there's a trade-off of upfront costs versus the preset sale price that is locked in. These contracts expire in a month. For even more costs, the trader could buy a put option contract that expires in two months instead of one month because it ensures the stock for longer, and for an even higher cost, they can buy one that expires later than that, three months, six months, usually up to a year. For this example, I used SLV, the silver ETF. The cost for options varies for each stock or ETF. We will discuss options pricing in later videos, but in general, the higher the volatility in an asset's price, the more the options will cost for that asset. So that's an example of using a put option as an insurance policy to protect against loss. In the next video, we will look at using a put option as a speculative instrument. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome. In this video, we will look at using put options for speculation. In the last video, we looked at an example of using a put option as an insurance policy to protect against loss on a stock the trader already owned. In the example, the trader owned 100 shares of SLV, the silver ETF. He was bullish long term, so he didn't want to sell his shares of SLV, but he was concerned that SLV could drop in price in the near future for some reason. Therefore, he bought a put option to lock in a preset sell price in case SLV dropped in price. That was an example of a trader using a put option as an insurance policy to protect stock that he already owns. A put option could also be used as a speculative instrument. Let's take the same scenario with another trader using a put option for speculation. At the time of making this video, SLV is $18.62 a share. The trader does not own any SLV. However, he feels that SLV will definitely drop in the near future. He could short sell 100 shares of the ETF, but instead he buys an $18 put option for 33 cents per share. The trader has now locked in the right to sell 100 shares of SLV for the price of $18 per share anytime between the time he buys the contract and the time the contract expires. If SLV drops below $18 per share, he can buy SLV and immediately sell it for $18 any time until the option expires. Let's say that SLV drops to $17 per share. The trader can buy 100 shares for $17 per share and use his option contract to sell SLV for $18 per share. He paid $17 per share, plus the option contract cost him $0.33 cents per share to buy. So his total cost was $17.33 per share but he had locked in the right to sell SLV for $18 per share. He sells SLV for $18, and he paid a total of $17.33 per share, so he makes $0.67 cents a share minus brokerage commissions. The trader paid $0.33 cents per share to lock in a sell price of $18 per share. Therefore, for the trader to make money, the price of SLV must be lower than $17.67 per share. In other words, SLV must drop at least 33 cents per share below the locked-in sell price of $18 to pay for the 33 cents per share cost of the option, 
Locking in a sell price of $18 per share for a cost of $0.33 cents per share means that SOV must drop to $17.67 per share or below. If SOV does not drop below $17.67 a share, the trader loses money. If SOV stays at or above $18 a share, the trader would not choose to use this option to sell the stock at $18 per share since he can get more for selling it at the current price at the time of more than $18 per share. Therefore, the option expires worthless and the trader loses the $0.33 cents he paid up front. If SOV drops below $18 per share, but not below $17.67 per share, the trader does use this option. He buys SOV at the current price of between $17.67 and $18 and sells it for $18, making the difference between the two. However, the amount he makes is less than the $0.33 cents up front cost he paid, so he loses some money but not the whole $0.33 cents a share he would lose if SOV was at $18 or higher. Now let's compare shorting a stock versus buying a put option. Shorting a stock requires more capital up front. Buying the $18 put option only costs the trader $33 up front. If the trader shorts the stock and the stock rises in price, his losses are potentially unlimited as the stock can climb to any price. But by buying a put option instead, his possible losses are capped to a maximum fixed amount of $0.33 cents per share or $33 total plus commissions. Even if the trader shorts SOV and uses a stop loss to protect his account to a maximum loss, the price of SOV could gap overnight or over the weekend, causing him to lose more than anticipated. The possible losses on buying an SOV put option is capped to a fixed amount. If SOV does drop in price, the potential percent gain is much greater with an option. Let's say that SOV drops to $17 per share. The profit on an option trade is a much larger percentage of the required money up front. There are two trade-offs here. The first is that SOV must move a certain amount for the option to become profitable. So SOV could drop in price only a little bit causing the trader that shorted SOV to be profitable but not enough that the put option is profitable. The other trade-off is the time factor. Whereas the trader that bought the put option has a much larger potential gain and a capped maximum loss, his contract has a one month time limit. In this example, the trader chose an $18 put option on SOV when the current price of SOV was $18.62 a share. This was not his only choice of contracts to buy. In the next video, we will look at other contract choices the trader could choose. With emphasis on the relationship between the upfront cost of the options, also known as the premium, the preset sell price that is locked in, also known as the option strike price, the potential gain, the potential loss, and where the price of SOV has to be in each situation for the trader to be profitable. See you then.